There is nothing worse than putting blood, sweat, tears, and money into getting your Squarespace website live, only to see it's not appearing on Google. You could have the best website in the world, but if it's not appearing on Google, then target customers aren't gonna find you. Luckily for you, it is a simple fix, and in this video, I'm gonna tell you how to get your Squarespace website onto Google and how to maximize the chance of getting on page one. My name's Henry Purchase, and I'm the founder of SEO Space, the Squarespace SEO plugin, and I've got experience ranking hundreds of Squarespace pages on page one of Google. So make sure you stick around to the end of the video where I take you through the four most common things that I see Squarespace websites do wrong that's stopping them from getting on page one. The specific thing that I'm gonna look at in this video to get onto Google is setting up Google Search Console properly. Google Search Console is not only really important for getting data around how people are finding you on Google, it will tell you the number of clicks you're getting and even the terms people are searching, but it's also the platform that you use to tell Google that you're ready to appear on search engines and to submit certain information to make it easier for Google. The first thing I'm gonna do is show you how to set up Google Search Console. And even if you've already done this, I recommend you watch it through because there's some things that you may not have done which could be holding you back. Now, the first thing that you're going to want to do is go onto your Squarespace dashboard. I'm gonna be doing this specifically for SEO Space because we're doing our launch in Q1 2023 and this is a new website, so I haven't even set up Google Search Console on it yet. And once you're here, you're going to want to go to settings. Then you should go to connected accounts, connect account, Google Search Console. So you can connect Google Search Console all within the Squarespace dashboard. You should then click the Google account that you want to link up and then press allow to make sure that Google Search Console can access everything that it needs. And once you do this, you'll be brought back to the Squarespace dashboard where it will tell you that you've connected your account and it will take up to 72 hours to index your website. You can then go on see analytics and this is really cool because Squarespace and this is really cool because Squarespace has a built-in dashboard for you to see your Google Search Console data. However, you do need to go to the Google Search Console dashboard for the next step as there's some things that you can only do on there. For this, you're going to just want to search Google Search Console onto Google. Click start now, and then make sure you're signed onto the account where you connected the website to. You then go on here and click the property that you've just added. This essentially just allows you to see all the websites that you've got on there. And then when you click on it, you'll be presented with a dashboard where the data will be shown. Now for an example, this is my personal travel blog, and you can not only see how your clicks on the website are performing over time, but when you go to search results, you can also see how your clicks and impressions are changing over time, as well as all the different terms that you're being found for on Google. Now, if you've gone to this dashboard straight after connecting it to Squarespace, you won't see anything yet, so don't worry about that. All you need to do is go to sitemaps in the navigation bar, and then add your sitemap to Google Search Console. One thing that Squarespace does really well is it automatically creates your sitemap which means all you need to do on here is type in sitemap.xml and then press submit. And this essentially submits your sitemap to Google so that it knows the pages to index. This is a new website, so there's only one URL, there's only one page. However, your website may have much more. And then if you go back to overview, there's one last thing that you need to do. You should get the URL of your website and then put it into the inspect bar at the top. And this process is essentially going to manually submit the URL to Google. So if your website isn't already on Google, it will tell you here. And all you have to do is press request indexing, which is manually asking Google to go through to the page and index it on Google. It can take a couple of seconds, so don't worry. Now, I would recommend that you do this manual request for the important pages on your website. So if there's main pages that you want to rank, such as your home page, services page, then I'd recommend you manually go through. I believe there's a limit of around 10 pages that you can submit manually. So if you do have the time, then it may be worth manually submitting each page. But because we've submitted our sitemap, you don't need to worry about this. I just do it as an extra precaution. Now, once you're all set up on Google Search Console, you've done most things in your power in order to make sure that Google indexes your website on Google. So in theory from here, you should now 
appear on Google within around 48 hours. However, for many of you, this may not be enough. I've dealt with plenty of clients and there's been plenty of the Squarespace SEO plugin users before that have struggled getting onto Google. And what I'm gonna do now is take you through the four most common things that I see people do wrong when they're trying to index the website on Google. And this can be really frustrating because you can do everything with Google Search Console, you can go through the process that I've just shown you, but if you do one of these four mistakes, then you could be holding yourself back. Now, the first thing that I see people do wrong is not adding enough content, i.e. text, onto the page. If you've only got 50 words of content on a page, then how is Google meant to know what to rank you for? You have to tell Google in many cases what you should be ranking for, and at a minimum, you want to have at least 300 words of content on every single page on your website, as this will not only help Google know what you should rank for, but it also allows you to provide enough value to the reader, which is the second thing that I see people do wrong. Not only do you need to have enough words on the page, but you also need to have enough value. One thing that you've got to remember is that Google makes money by consumers' eyes being on Google for longer. So if Google doesn't provide the best results in search engines, people no longer use Google anymore. So it wants to make sure that the content that you have on your web page is high quality. It's going to help the user that has searched something into Google find their solution. You need to help Google make money in order to rank. And that comes through providing high quality content that is going to keep people happy on Google to so the see ads. So not only do you need to make sure you've got enough content, but you also need to make sure that it's providing enough value. And if you're stuck here, all you need to do is type in the thing that you want to rank for on Google and look at what's already ranking there. You can compare what you've got on your page to what they've got on their page. And this can be an indicator for what you should add to your page. For example, if minimum they've all got a thousand words on their page, they've got lots of images, lots of external links to sources, then you also know that you're probably going to have to do that because Google is already showing what it deems is valuable for its users and you can take this from there in order to make your page better. Now the third thing that you need to check is you need to make sure whether you've got enough high quality backlinks. Backlinks are links from other websites on the internet to yours. And they're important because if you've got more high quality links from your industry, this shows to Google that you're an authority in the space. Picture the internet like a spider's web. If you've got more, the closer you are to the center, the more links that you have to other parts of the web. These links are backlinks. The closer you are to the center, the more backlinks you have, the stronger your position and the more likely that you are to appear on Google. So if you don't have any backlinks, this could be a key thing which is stopping you from appearing on Google because when Google looks at your website, it sees you've got no backlinks, you may not have enough content, there may not be enough quality content, and this shows that it isn't worthy of being ranking. If Google showed your page to a user, it wouldn't be confident that you would provide the answer to their search term. So make sure you get, make sure you focus on backlinks. How to get backlinks is for another video, but do some research on YouTube, go on Google, see how you can get backlinks, as this could really increase the chance of you getting onto page one. And the fourth and final thing is technical errors. If you're not following SEO best practices on your website, then this is a big red flag to Google that it should not rank you on page one. If the structure of your website isn't right, if it's really slow at loading, if the images need compressing, if there's lots of broken links, this makes it really hard for Google to go into your website, see what you should rank for, and then place you onto search engine. So make sure you go through and fix the technical errors on your website. There are a number of ways that I recommend you could do this. You could look at Screaming Frog, you could use tools like Ahrefs and SEMrush. But as you're looking to get a Squarespace website on page one of Google, I would recommend that you check out a Squarespace SEO plugin. It's been designed to provide an easy to use, no jargon SEO plugin that allows any Squarespace user to improve the SEO and get on page one of Google. So if you are looking to fix these technical errors, and the plugin will not only help you with the technical errors to make sure that you're not shooting yourself in the foot in terms of getting on page one, but it'll also make sure that you've got enough content, that it's high quality, 
and it will also help you with backlinks for our SEO community where I've put resources on there that help you get backlinks from other high quality websites. Thank you for watching. If you do have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And if you are still having any problems with getting on page one of Google, also leave a comment and I will happily reply and give you some suggestions for what you can do with your website in order to get it on page one. Thanks guys, I'll see you in the next one.